We saw earlier that you can check the results of the Euler-Kromer method by seeing whether the total energy is conserved. There's a similar principle at work in the three-dimensional spring problem we studied using potential energy. Whenever a potential energy has the same relationship with all three position coordinates, the potential energy is said to be rotationally symmetric. And one of the consequences of being rotationally symmetric is that a quantity called angular momentum is kept constant. Angular momentum is a vector calculated as the cross product between the position vector and the momentum vector. In simple terms, it's the spinniness of a system. Conservation of angular momentum is what's responsible for ice skaters speeding up as they bring in their arms and the formation of planetary systems. And we can check whether angular momentum is conserved in our code. Here's our potential energy based Euler Kromer code from last time, but now we've added an arrow to represent the angular momentum. With each pass around the loop, we update this arrow to show the angular momentum, the cross product of position with momentum. For a review of the cross product, see the VPython for Beginners episode linked in the description below. The spring potential energy we have in place exhibits rotational symmetry since it relates to x, y, and z in the exact same way. So this arrow should maintain the same length and direction. If we run the animation, we see that it does. We can also see that the angular momentum vector is perpendicular to the plane of the object's motion. Now let's trade out our spring potential energy for the gravitational potential energy. For more information about gravity, see the Let's Build a Solar System series linked in the description below. Again, this potential energy treats x, y, and z the same way, so we should see angular momentum conserved. And sure enough, we see a consistent angular momentum vector. And again, the angular momentum vector is perpendicular to the plane of the object's motion. Now let's try one more potential energy, one that does not treat x, y, and z the same. We've taken our spring potential energy and weighted the x dependence by a factor of 2. This time, we don't see a consistent angular momentum vector. You should now be able to predict and test whether a potential energy will keep angular momentum consistent. For each of the potential energies listed on the screen, predict whether they will keep angular momentum consistent. Then use the code in the link in the description below to check whether you are correct. Next time, we'll add a grid to represent the potential energy to help us visualize what's going on in these simulations.